that. Welcome to our um, Lunch and Learn. This is our first Lunch and Learn for the school year. We're excited that you're here. We will be offering them most months. And I'll put a plug in that our next Lunch and Learn is Friday, October 13th. And all of them are at noon on Zoom. So feel free to grab your lunch. Join us. We are happy you're here. This is one way for the counselors at Kilbourne to connect with our parents. So I am Erica Mann. I am one of the counselors at Kilbourne and I service students MO through SE. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now and we can get started with our presentation because I know your time is very valuable. So our topic today is going to be about study skills. Now, obviously, we know as the parents, you are not necessarily studying, but we want to give you this information because this will help your student better prepare for the studying that high school does require. Um, if we have any freshman parents on here, this is quite a transition from middle school and developing these study, study skills is um, very important, especially for carrying on throughout high school and then whatever those post-secondary plans are. So whether that's college or trade school, there will be some need to utilize these study skills as they progress in their career as a student. Okay, so there we go. Um, so studying over time. This is an important one. Um, cramming all of your studying into the night before does not better prepare you. In fact, it gives you more anxiety be anxiety about the test and the quiz, and you do not absorb the information. So studies really have shown that if you spread out the studying and review of the material, that actually is setting you up better for success. So what you will want to kind of remember and have the key takeaways is students should be setting up a short study time that's consistent every day. And when we say study, this is just simply reviewing the notes of the class that they learned that day or the day before. Um, you want to space out the repetition, which means just breaking that information into smaller chunks that you can review over longer periods of time. Um, as students start to do this, they might realize this one unit I'm struggling a little bit more in. Um, so then they can help to develop some other notes that might help them in that specific area. We have found that um, if students review what they had learned in class that evening, there's 80% retention rate. So that means if you review the material of what was talked about in class within a 24 hour period, 80% of that you are going to retain. So fortunately, this effect is cumulative. So after a week, if you are consistent with just spending five to 10 minutes of reviewing your notes, you may have a 100% retention rate of the information that you have been learning. So generally, psychologists agree this type of interval studying as opposed to cramming is best and that students should study closer to the day they learned the material as opposed to studying closer to the test, right? That curve of forgetting, if we quickly forget information over time, if we make no attempt to retain it. So we wanna make sure that students are reviewing their notes closer to when the material is taught versus closer to when the test is, and that will help um, them retain as much information as possible. Hey everyone, um, so I'm Sarah Chanel. I um, serve students with the last name C-R through H-E. Um, so, as many of us probably know, it is very easy to tell ourselves that we'll complete the task, similar to what Mrs. Mann was just sharing, that like we'll look at our review, our notes, you know, every day. Um, but it really helps to make that plan. We can tell ourselves that we're going to do that task, but if we don't make a distinct plan, oftentimes, especially for myself, um, it's difficult to get that done, particularly when we're balancing so many things. And that's the same for our students. They're balancing so many different responsibilities and tasks. 
So that is why it's super important to make that plan for studying. Um, this way it's a guaranteed fit into their day. So this may take some trial and error. It could be using a planner and writing the plan in their calendar and their planner. It might entail creating a reminder on their phone um, or using the notes app or something like that. Um, however they choose to do that, it helps to put specific times down to develop a routine. So, you know, it can simply become part of their day. So once they identify that plan, um, then it can be helpful to develop, you know, an, a set um, approach or plan for that time frame. So it's helpful to um, determine, you know, is it better to start with the harder tasks or the harder subject first? This way they can get through the harder pieces when they're feeling more fresh and ready to take on um, those harder tasks plus getting some of the difficult tasks um, that might be a little bit more time consuming um, can create that sense of accomplishment and actually reduce some of that anxiety related to the long to-do list that they might have. Um, or it might be easier to get started with some of the easier subjects um, because I know when I'm when I have my to-do list, just like striking a couple little things off the to-do list also creates that sense of accomplishment and can help get into a nice little groove. Um, and keep striking those things off of the to-do list. So it'll help maybe, you know, as counselors, we help students do this all the time. Um, and it's also helpful at par parents at home to talk through some of these strategies with the students, because again, it might be some trial and error. Um, and then that way they can they're manage their plan here and at home. All right, everybody. My name is Lauren Himmel and I am new to Kilbourne. I have the letters of the alphabet H I to M I. So actively studying, what does that look like? What do our students need to be doing to actually be studying to the point where it's going to sink in and help them then perform on their tests or whatever it is that's coming up for them? So we want to just point out that reading is not studying. Rereading is something that actually leads to some quick forgetting. Um, and really just want to point out that it's more important that students can focus in, in that small chunk of time, like Erica was talking about, to really make connections with the, tier, the material. So helping students to create connections for themselves that actually matter to the material that they're going through. We also think it's a great idea for our students to explain these concepts um, to someone else. So I think parents often wonder, should students be studying with peers? Should they be speaking to their parents about what they're studying? Everyone needs to find what's going to work best for them. But in a lot of ways, talking through the subject matter, looking over the study guide with a parent, with a friend is a good idea. A lot of students sometimes will come to us and ask, should they be studying with their friends? Should they be studying in groups? We actually feel like that's a good idea. That will mimic some of what's happening at the post-secondary level. So them beginning to practice what it's like to study, bouncing ideas off of one another in those small groups can really be a great thing and really is a part of actively studying. Focus on the big ideas and make their own examples. So students being able to look back at their notes on a daily basis, then going back to those notes and picking out the key concepts is huge so that they do understand those key big ideas. And then um, problems, going back to old problems, making sure that they're redoing the old problems, looking into their Schoology account, seeing what was kind of the highlights from certain days, accessing study guides. Teachers aren't typically trying to hide things from students as to what they need to know. So students just sometimes need some help in how to actively study and looking for the best resources that are gonna serve them as they study. Um, on our next slide, we're gonna talk about this idea of eliminating distractions. So here I'm going to study, but oh look, a new Snapchat. I think we, even as adults, we can get very easily distracted by social media, our own phones, and how we can best manage our time to not have the distractions. There are certain things that are available, um, something like Focus Me as a tool to help block some of these distractions during the study time. 
we really think it's a great idea for students to be able to say kind of how Mrs. Chanel was talking about. If they have a calendar of events, they know what they're doing when, they can then best prepare to study. So gathering everything, even including their snacks, eliminating all of those distractions, organizing their space. What do they like that studying to look like? Which room is best for them? What should the lighting be? Is their phone completely in a different room? Do parents have the phone? You have to best manage that as a family. Eventually, they could be off in their college setting, and they're going to need to know how to do that themselves. So that's something to think about as well. Helping them kind of scaffold their phone where it is while they're studying is an important thing. Talking to their family and friends about, hey, this is my study time. I'm going in here. I'm going to be in here for 35 minutes. I'm taking this time to really hone in on my studying for my math test. That's just an important lesson to help them learn. And then kind of getting everything else out of the way. Their chores are done. Um, they've already done some of the other things that are important to them in that day. And they know that they're going to study during this time. And then moving on, my name is Brianna Abbott. I'm another one of the school counselors. I work with students with the last names beginning with the letters A through CO. Um, and when we're talking about this, obviously you've heard some of the other counselors already sharing, taking, like they were talking about like, oh, you don't wanna just read through your notes and you wanna actively engage with this content. And that's all really valid and important. Um, and it's important too, to remember that um, when we're thinking about this, you want to have good notes. You want your son or daughter to have a solid framework for what they're trying to compare this information to, to figure out what it is that they need to be using to help them study. And so um, really being intentional about taking good notes is a great place for them to start. So they can start their notes on a fresh page, keep their notes clean and organized and separated out by different subjects. Sometimes um, students will be like, oh, I forgot paper or I didn't bring the right notebook. So I'm going to just write it in here. And then everything becomes very jumbled. And then it's hard to stay organized and, and keep on top of things and keep track of what it is you're supposed to be knowing for this particular test. Whereas if you're starting fresh every day, you know that information. And there are lots of strategies like um, when they were talking about, you know, actively engaging with your notes at the end of your, when you take your notes at the end of a day, um, you can summarize like, what were the things I was supposed to know from this day and writing that information down, writing down in a place, all of the things I'm going to need to do, um, the concepts that I definitely don't understand, I'm going to have to ask about making note of that and being able to have that information or being able to go back and supplement if I'm supposed to do some reading and incorporating that into it so that they understand what they're looking at. The cleaner their notes are, which can be a very big challenge for many students, makes it easier to then look at, read, and understand when they're trying to go back and review that information. If things are really messy and all over the place, it may take them revising those notes to make sure that they get it. Um, they're never going to be able to write down every single word that comes out of a teacher's mouth. And so focusing on those big concepts, um, but at the same time, they do have to learn to write things down because they're never going to be able to remember it all. I wish I could remember everything I was supposed to do in the day, but I can't. And so I learn how to accommodate for that by coming up with some different strategies. Um, Sometimes students will have a lot of success when they're color coding. That can help for our visual learners who um, maybe then can kind of help them with that recall of, oh, I remember that was underlined in blue. What did I do for that? And where maybe they have like keywords in a different color or um, they focus on different aspects of um, making that as organized as they can. And then when, whenever possible, trying to put things in your words, you know, when you're helping your son or daughter to explain to talk about their information and the notes and what they're what they're focusing on, when they can put it in their words, it's always going to be beneficial to them because that means they're understanding it. Um, Mrs. Himmel talked about, you know, when you study in groups, like that's a chance that you're putting things in your words because you're talking about it with someone else. And so anytime that kids can do that, putting those their words, the notes that they're taking is going to be helpful for them. Um, if you're interested, I will tell you that there's a method of, of note-taking called the Cornell note-taking method that there's lots of information about online. Um, it's a 
too hard to show on a Zoom, but um, that's out there too as another strategy. If your um, son or daughter is looking to try and shake up how they take their notes, um, that's another idea as well. After we move from note taking, the reality is there's still going to be questions. That's normal. It is not normal to think that a high school student is going to know everything about a subject that's being taught. It is perfectly normal, natural, appropriate for them to have questions. The challenge is sometimes kids think that they should know it all and that they don't want to ask questions because then they look dumb. And that's not true. It's these teachers have degrees in this. A student doesn't. They're learning it for the first time. Teachers know that they're going to have questions and they want to help, but the teachers are also not mind readers. And so we have to kind of help kids bridge that gap and learn that it's okay to ask questions and to keep asking questions in different ways until they get an answer that makes sense for them. Because seeking out those resources and using your teachers who are writing your test questions um, is a really helpful thing with trying to learn that information. Um, Again, so whenever possible, we strongly encourage students to be asking those questions, to be able to get that information, get those answers to um, what it is that they are, that they're trying to understand. At the same time, it's very tempting for kids to wait until test day to ask a question. You know, they go rushing into class and they're like, I don't know, I don't know how to do this. And, or it's, I don't know anything you've taught in the last two weeks. Like, can you teach it all to me again? Again. Hopefully, by doing the things that were already talked about by some of the other counselors, you know, we're not going to end up in that crisis moment of panic. But it, a lot of times that's their anxiety talking to them. I'm not feeling prepared. I'm not understanding. Whereas if we're asking those questions ahead of time, that can make a really big difference. And then again, Mrs. Himmel already mentioned this too, but when you're helping somebody else, you have a question or maybe one of your peers has a question work with them. When you try to help them or they try to help you, you're going back and forth and you can try and figure out that answer together. You do want to make sure if you're both a little bit, you know, if both, you know, your child and their best friend are both a little bit confused, you want to really still encourage them to make sure that they're double checking with their teacher that what they think they figured out together is still the right information. But but a lot of times teaching it to someone else can make a big difference. Um, one of the teach one of the math teachers was just talking to me yesterday that um, one of her students who had been, you know, struggling in math in previous years, all of a sudden this year was doing amazing on the first test. And she asked the student, why, like what, what caused this huge change? And she said, oh, well, I'm taking what I'm learning in your class and I'm trying to teach my boyfriend who's teaching, taking the same class in college as a freshman and so I'm having to learn it from you so I can teach him um, how to do this. And so her efforts of teaching somebody else made her test grade go up significantly. Hi, everybody. I'm Molly Lord, and I am the school counselor for students with last names SG through Z. Um, so thanks for attending. Um, I'm going to talk about Kilborn specific resources. And if you are new to the high school, you have a freshman. Um, this may be the first time you've heard of this resource, but hopefully uh, it's not the last. We cannot speak enough about our counselor website. So wkhscounselors.com has so many resources on there um, that we direct our students and our parents to, to help us. And one of the, since we're talking about study skills, if you go under the academic column and then under student success, you will find on the right a whole host of student success um, supports. Um, anything from student, we've asked our students what are study tips and they've given us a list, um, note taking, organization, how to avoid study traps, what are those study traps, like how do I begin, how do I remember things, um, to test taking. So it is a wealth of resources. Um, we hope you have bookmarked that already, or if, again, you're new to the high school, that you will bookmark that and reference the website um, for study skills, since that's what we're talking about, but all things related to um, Worthington-Kilbourne High School and helping your students be successful. 
Um, an additional resource that we have here that sometimes can be underutilized by our students or unaware that they are resources are our four academic assistants. Um, they are in room 209. They are called the Teaching and Learning Center. Um, and there are four people there, Mrs. Harani, Mrs. Elliott, Mrs. Rhodes, and Mrs. Topkins, who are there to help with English, math, science, and social studies. Um, their whole job, th their whole day is to interact with students that come into that room to get um, help with anything from homework to note taking to essay writing to lab completions to projects. Academic support is the name of the game in that room and they are there to help. So please um, remind your students that they're there, encourage them to attend there. Um, they actually can be assigned there uh, in place of their academic prep if that is someplace that um, is, an, is a resource that they could use. And then some reminders for, oh wait, we have a test tomorrow. So hopefully if your students are using all the strategies that we've had before, they will not, they will not be shocked to find that there's a test coming. But either way, um, knowing that a test is coming can provide some anxiety to um, your son or daughter um, and helping them best prepare for that includes preparing all the things we we that have led up to this, but the night before, one of the biggest things that you can suggest to them is really to get that good night's sleep. Um, if they have done the studying and and um, preparing, then their goal the night before is to review the material, but get that good night's sleep, um, which is beneficial to helping the brain rest and recover over the night to remember what they've studied. Um, only getting two hours of sleep is not going to help them on that test the next day. So getting that good night's sleep, sleep, getting rested, waking up, and then um, getting prepared to take on that day. Another thing is breakfast. I know a lot of high schoolers don't necessarily want to do that. They're rushing out the door, but if they can get some nourishment in that body, um, it keeps them alert and, and ready to be sustained through the day. Um, and then suggestions for you to share with your students. Good just test prep is, um, when they are approaching their class that has the test that day is getting in that mindset. So getting to their classroom on time early, um, getting settled with the materials that they need, taking those deep calm breaths to sort of open up what they know about that subject, remembering and recalling what the, the material is. So if I'm sitting in history, hopefully I'm not thinking about math right now. Um, and then using those good test taking strategies that we pointed out on our website, um, have those your students be prepared with those to implement. And then finally, believe it or not, you guys are still a, a wonderful resource for your students. Um, we are we're working on becoming independent, but you are definitely a resource and an asset to them in all aspects of their life, life including um, test taking and test prep. So um, you know your son or daughter's strengths and weaknesses the best. You've lived with them for the past 14 to 18 years. Um, so encourage them when they are frustrated to um, navigate that frustration, um, create practice tests with them, for them, allowing them, like Ms. Abbott said, teaching somebody else the content really does put that content in you um, well. So let them teach you. It's probably been a hot minute since you studied um, functions uh, that you've studied the Civil War, that you've studied the importance of um, the Chinese dynasty. So let them teach you and refresh and pull out that stuff from your head that is somewhere in there. Um, and then ask them questions. So if there are review guides that the teachers have given them, you ask the questions, let them dialogue, make some popcorn, make some hot chocolate, just be there with them in that process. You can't learn it for them, but you can, can help them through that. Um, it's sort of like when they were in first grade and you were going through weekly spelling words for the spelling test, like high school content's obviously much more deep and complex than that, but setting up those routines that you did with them then. And then we're gonna open it up for questions and answers. We, we like to give you about 15, we went over, we had a lot of content today, 15 minutes of content and then time for questions. So um, we will open it up if you guys could type questions into the chat room. The chat, we will read them and then answer them for everybody to hear. And then just a reminder, we are doing monthly lunch and learn. So the next one is October 13th. And our topic is going to be searching for scholarships. Um, but now we'll open the chat for questions.
Thank you, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my computer. Um, so let's see. I think I was trying to look at some of these chats. Um, it looks like one of the first questions was if there um, or if you can have a copy of the slides to review with your daughter. The good news is, is we are recording this Zoom. It will be on our website wkhscounselors.com. Um, we will load not only this Zoom presentation, but that we'll also have um, our slideshow deck as well. So you can review those. Um, okay, Ms. Sabat, one of the replies I get if I suggest the student approach the teacher. So, so this question that Mrs. Mann is just trying to skim yeah. through is what happens when your son or daughter or um, in, in your case, grandkids say, it's different than when you were in school and um, the teachers don't have time to help us. That's not truth. No, they may not be able to help in the middle of class. So that can be a challenge is that if you're walking in on the day of the test and you say, I've got questions, I need help. Or you walk in and they're ask, you're asking first thing, but it, but it's a situation where if they say to the teacher, hey, can I stay after class for a second and ask you another question? Or can we set up a time to meet before school, after school, during a lunch period, um, a prep period? The teachers are going to find time to be able to help support your um, students with making sure that they're getting the information that they want to have um, to be accessible to them. Additionally, like Mrs. Lord was saying, there's also the academic assistants who will also be available to help them too. So there's definitely no shortage of people who know this content that are accessible and available and willing to help students with that information. Thank you. Um, it, another question is about room 209 and um, when students can access, all periods are scheduled with something. Um, Lunch might be a good time if a student has, so lunches are 45 minutes. They're the um, same time as a period at our class. So if students eat within 20 minutes, then they can go up to room 209 to access help. They can also reach directly out to one of our academic assistants and try to schedule a time um, in the morning if they come in a little early, just to confirm that our academic assistants will be up there, but they are more than willing to schedule the time um, with our students if they do not have an open period. It's not ideal to use your lunch period um, every day, but if it's once or twice a week, just to kind of brush up and review um, some of the material learned in class, then I think that that would be pretty reasonable. Um, there's, oh, I'm oh. sorry, go ahead, Mrs. Schnell. That's okay. There's also a question about whether to check Infinite Campus or Schoology um, to stay up on like what students are being assigned and things like that. Um, I would recommend Schoology has a lot of the assignments that are being assigned. Infinite Campus is to help track the grades and what you know assignments might be missing or how they did on tests, things like that. Schoology, I would say, would be more like upcoming assignments and things like that in each class. And Schoology does have a calendar. It'll say currently due, upcoming, and late missing, if you can set those parameters in there with your child. Um, and the other piece, since we were talking about the psychologists and their expertise in how to retain the most knowledge, even if your son or daughter doesn't have a specific homework assignment, reviewing the content from that day, um, that night. So if I did my math homework in my academic prep, then at home, I could be reviewing my notes for history. Um, so just because they don't have a, a physical assignment that needs to be done, um, they may have an upcoming project, an upcoming lab, or they may have notes and content to review that evening just to refresh it so that they get that 80% retention like Mrs. Mann was talking about. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be like hours of work, but you spend 10 minutes reviewing history, 10 minutes reviewing English literature, like building in that habit to retain that knowledge so that then when the test comes, it's not being the, the need to do 20 days worth of content. Could I add one thing, Mrs. Lord? Sure. One, one of the tricks, um, the freshman, oh, the last freshman, the, the freshman very often struggles. She has her own challenges, but I'm very aware of her weak areas. One of the tricks that I have found works very well for her. I go into Schoology and check that course 
check what they have covered that day. So when she gets here, I say, what can you tell me about this? And that seems to be able to get her to understand she has missed some information. And so when we talk about maybe she can approach her teacher, sometimes she just spits the information out. It's amazing. <laughs> but that that might help this parent as far as how, you know, using Schoology. And then and another parent just put in, is there a parent access for Schoology or do they, do you just have to peer over your son's shoulder or log in with his credentials? There is actually access that parents can have for that. Um, and so it would be reaching out to the teachers and being able to get that access, but you, you as parents get your own access. Hey, it is 1230. Um, we want to respect your time. We appreciate you spending um, this very important half hour of your day. Again, this is um, being recorded right now. It will be on our website and we really appreciate you coming. Our next one is Friday, October 13th, and we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody enjoy your weekend. I'm going to.